Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch. And we're a few weeks out from Blender 2.91 from being released out of beta. And what I'm going to do today is showcase some of the cool new features in Blender 2.91. Now, I'm not going to go through the full release notes. I'll save that for the release. If you're not already here, uh, hit the subscribe button. And, and when it is released fully, we will cover all of that. Instead, what I'm going to do is showcase a couple of the really cool new features in the next version in Blender 2.91 for you to get excited about. So here we are. We've got our default scene in the world. I'm just going to grab my default cube here. Uh, we're going to go in here. We're going to subdivide it once or twice. Okay, we're good to go. Here is my cube. So now I'm going to do is come over here and we're going to throw a collision restraint on that guy. So we got this box or this cube in our world. Now what I'm going to do is add another mesh in our plane like so. We'll just grab that guy, hit Z key, move it up the axis and we'll scale it out like that. Okay, so now we have a model to work with. I want to switch over here to edit mode. And once again, we'll do some subdivides. So subdivide that guy down. I know I could do this on creation, but this is my workflow. I've gotten used to it. Okay, so we've added some real detail to this guy. Now what we're going to do is switch it over into sculpt mode. Now, thanks to Pablo, we've gotten a ton of great new features uh, on the sculpting side. It's amazing how much sculpting has improved on Blender. And where we're looking at today is in the cloth brush. There's all kinds of stuff you could do with cloth. But right now, by default, you can grab and sort of start moving things around. Now, I've noticed a bit of a glitch here. I can't really impact things until I make a small tweak to the brush. Once I've got changed to the brush, my uh, changes show up much better. So there you see, we're kind of moving around on the brush. So I'm going to switch here to bring out the N for the tools menu over here. And you're going to see a couple of the settings we've got. Obviously, you've got features here you can auto smooth as you do your stroke. But what we can do now is we can actually come in here for deformation and we can switch to different kinds. So we can do things like inflate the cloth, like so. Or we can uh, pinch. So we can pitch in a point like so. So you got these tools for controlling uh, your cloth brushes. You got a lot more control than you used to have. You've even got tools in here now for the plasticity of the brush, which is always harder for me to find than it should. I mean, it's just, where did you go? Right there. You got to scroll it out to find it. Soft body plasticity. So we can also turn that one up a little bit. And I'm going to turn on enable collision. So there is a cool new feature down here. We're going to scroll down a little bit more. And this is why we have the cube in our scene. I can come down here and I can go to cloth filters. And now what we can do is control a number of different filters. The easiest one there is gravity. So if I go left and then boom, right up gravity, left down gravity, and watch what happens, nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna go right back up. I'm gonna turn use collisions on and now the exact same thing. And then boom, there is gravity applying to our mesh. So now when I pull this guy back up, there you're going to see, you can actually have gravity impact with your cloth brushes and other objects in the scenes. Some really powerful stuff here, really cool things you can do with it. By the way, there are other filters you could do, things like inflate and deflate. So I went the wrong direction. And you can notice these things all work together. Now you can easily create uh, pretty big garbage by accident. Went, went the wrong direction. Let's bring that bike back down. And then boom, there we go. So we've got our gravity collisions going on. Uh, we've got the inflation. We've got expand. We've got pinch and so on. So some really powerful controls you could do over brushes. And this is one of the neat new features. Next up we have, let me just do a default cube again. We have our all new Boolean tools. This is actually pretty sweet as well. So what I'm going to do is come in here and we're going to create a new collection. So we got collection one and inside of collection one, I'm going to add, uh, let's say, uh, let's do spheres. All right, so there's a UV sphere. Grab, move that guy over. Shift duplicate, shift duplicate, shift duplicate, shift duplicate. All right, so there you see we've got this compound object right here. So now what I can do is I can take another object in the world, such as my cube here, and I can just bring him over so I overlap like that. So what I'm going to do now is a Boolean, and Booleans have changed a whole lot in 2.91. We have a new solver. Instead of just the B mesh solver, we now have this guy. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to pick a Boolean. You're going to notice by default, there are now two options. Uh, basically, solver, go back to the old one, uh, and that uses the B mesh solver. But now we have the exact solver. This is more intensive. This is definitely taking up a lot more processing power, but it gives you a much more precise result. And on top of that, it's got some cool new features, especially this. So what I can do is say operand type and switch to a collection. And then for collection, I can pick my collection of objects. And now what I've done, so grab this guy and let's just, uh, okay. So I did not want to move him that much. You notice how slow it is operating right now. So there I am. I'm going to move overlap and I'm just going to go ahead and we'll apply this operator. So it's all done and not bringing my computer to a crawl. And now if I move my cube out, there you go. 
So you have this new, much more exact Boolean system that can also take collections as one of the operands. That is really, really cool. So you can do much more complex Boolean shapes now, and you're going to get much more exact results. You should also get cleaner polygon lines as a result of the new algorithm, but it is more intensive. So if you want the old algorithm, you can still get that. You basically, all you're doing when you go into your Boolean is instead of using the exact, you use fast, you use fast, you've got the old version, but then you do not have, oh, you still have the option. I don't know if that actually works. I didn't think that worked. I thought you only got uh, the collections if you used exact, but it looks like it seems to work with both of them. Uh, but you're going to get, if you use exact, you get a much more exact mesh as a result, a cleaner mesh and a more accurate mesh. It's just going to be much more intensive. You saw when I uh, applied it and then moved one over the other, it brought my computer absolutely to its knees. But the new Boolean operations are really cool. Next, we got some really, really sweet eye candy. So again, back to my default cube. Here we are into uh, a new scene. And what I'm going to do now is uh, drag in an image from the outside world. So I'm going to switch over here. Let's go here, let's drop to my desktop. And I'm just going to drop in this line art image. There we go. All right. So here we are back in Blender. We now have this guy right here. Just move that around. And what you can do with these line shapes, this is actually really cool. I can come up here. And I can say trace image to grease pencil. And then boom, I'm done. Your options are available down here. You've got control over the thickness, the resolution, the scale, and so on. But what I've basically done is created a new G pencil object. So I can grab this guy that we were dealing with originally and move it out of the way. And look what we are left with. This G pencil rendition of it. At any time, we could go ahead. Uh, we could extrude this out or we could convert this into, say, um, a polygon curve. And then we could do a slight bevel on it. Like so. And so if you wanted to create, say, like a neon sign or some special effect in your world, you could literally just draw it up in a 2D paint program, drop it in, create a grease pencil brush out of it, and then boom, it's done. This is the fastest way I've seen for this kind of workflow yet. So if you wanted to do a certain, it's going to work for certain art styles, like holograms or neon signs or, or like 50s retro, like what you see here. This is really, really cool, powerful new feature. And then we've got one final one to showcase, and this is volumetric. So we've been moving more and more into the world of volumetrics with Blender, Open VDB support, etc. So what I'm going to do now is create a new object of type text. All right, so there we go. Let's switch into edit mode on that guy and control A, GFS. A little bit of a Vandy project here. All right, we're good to go. Back into object mode. All right, so there is our text looking good. And now what I'm going to do with said text, go down here into text mode. Uh, we shall extrude this guy out slightly. So that's geometry, extrude. All right, there we go. So we've got our text object right there. And now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to convert that to a mesh. All right, so we have a mesh in the world. Now what we can do is actually go in and create another object, an object of type of volume. So you could import one from open VDB data sets. What we can do here instead is create an empty volume. So we now have volume text. What you use volumes for is things like uh, fog or particles in the world. And this is a way of creating a volume set from a mesh. So now what I can do here is go to constraints, add modifier, and I can say mesh to volume. I can go ahead and say you, and I can pick my mesh. Let's go ahead and hide our mesh. So there we have just created a volume set out of our text. It's a little hard to see at first. Let's go ahead and increase the voxel amount. And let's decrease the density or increase the density. There you go. You can also change these values out. And you're going to get, if I, if I go lower with that one, you're going to see much closer to our original text like so. So if you want to have gaseous objects in your world, you want to bring in uh, volumetrics, you want to start working with this kind of stuff, you can actually create a new volume set out of a mesh really, really simply. So then we could come in, you know, for example, here, let's go to use nodes, we'll add a color to that guy. Boom. There you go. Volume data created directly inside of Blender in seconds from an existing mesh object. So you could do things like create, I don't know, smoke that comes out of a uh, uh, smokestack that you wanted to shape it. You could start with just a mesh and convert it into a volume. Uh, or again, you can still import from an OD, uh, a VDB set from an open VDB source of some kind. But as you can see, you can create volumetrics really easy in Blender 2.91. And I'm really just kind of touching on the surface of what's available. There are all kinds of features over on the uh, Blender 2.91 release notes, as you can see. Uh, all different kind of areas have gotten new features. One of the features I really wanted seemed to have been cut. There was the ability to do one-click geometry creation over and over and over again. It 
seems like that was taken out of the 2.91 release. So I'm guessing that's moved into the 2.92 alpha. So it's a bit of a teaser. These are some of the cool new features that are coming to Blender 2.91. Lots of things to get excited about. The, the, the sculpting stuff is amazing how fast and, and how much that is being improved with every release. But here you saw brand new, more exact booleans, uh, create volumes out of uh, mesh objects and that really cool uh, tracing functionality for grease pencils. All of those, everything I've seen today, I could really see how you could easily incorporate those into your workflow. I'm just staggered with how fast Blender is improving. With each one of these much more frequent releases, it shocks me how much they managed to get into each one. So that's it, Blender 2.91 beta preview if you want. I will uh, have a linked article with uh, download links available to you down below. So do check that one out, or you can wait about two weeks. And again, subscribe. I will make sure that I have full release notes and coverage of Blender 2.91.